Well, it was just a few years ago that the entire aftermarket really took a black eye when it came to catalytic converters. It seemed that no matter which brand you were using, none of them were very effective at keeping the check engine light off for very long. Now, maybe a little background information would help here. Back in 1986, that's when the current EPA standard for federal catalytic converters was established. And since that time, most converters have been built basically at, or maybe somewhat above that level, but right around that. The problem, though, is that since that time, the OE manufacturers have been changing their own standards for their own vehicles. So back in the year 2000, thereabouts, is when we started hearing about low emission vehicles coming onto the scene. And since that time, that's actually evolved to even something stricter, ultra low emissions, super ultra low emissions, and now we even have something called partial zero emission vehicles running around. So while the standard for catalytic converters stayed the same, the standard for the vehicles themselves was getting much more strict. Well, unfortunately, the response of most of the aftermarket was simply to blame the installer and call it misdiagnosis. Now, I do need to be clear on one point here. There really are a number of issues upstream that can fail that would lead to premature catalytic converter failure most notably anything to do with fuel management issues. But it does beg the question, if the installer was to blame all the time, then why did every aftermarket company at the same time come out with performance enhancements to their own products? Back at the time, Bozel wasn't actually making our own converters. We were buying out a lot of the catalyst or else the entire assembly from one aftermarket company or another. And we were somewhat in the same boat as our own customers we were having warranty problems left and right and we were constantly being told the problem was misdiagnosis as well. There came a point though where that wasn't good enough anymore and we're an OE supplier to many nameplates and the decision was made that we needed to synergize as much of our OE processes back into our aftermarket product as possible. So we went and got our own certifications and for the last several years we've been making our own converters and that allows us to control exactly how much loadings are being put into our product. The loadings specifically refer to the precious metal content and specifically how much precious metal is involved. That would be the platinum, the palladium, the rhodium, etc. that actually does the conversion process. So we upgraded that a lot, but we also went to a process, an OE process, for actually dispersing that precious metal across the, the catalyst as opposed to an aftermarket process. I have here an example of the old style product. You can see specifically this is what we call a clamshell design. There's two long seams that go along each side of the product and anywhere you have a seam like that where there's welding there is the possibility of a, a, even a pinhole leak uh, causing unmetered air to enter the system and that can cause premature failure. We've changed that process now though to where we have a spun design. And since there is no seam anywhere on the product, that means that you have eliminated that possibility. We've also gone to a thicker gauge metal. It's the OE gauge. It's about 25% thicker than what you would have with the aftermarket product. And we use an OE matting, the same that's used by OE, and also uh, an OE uh, catalyst that's inside. Now, the matting is specifically important because most of the aftermarket mattings that are on the market don't even cover the entire width of the catalyst itself. That's why some aftermarket companies may suggest a warm-up period for their products. That's not needed when you use OE. Essentially, the aftermarket now has a solution. There's no longer a need to pay dealer pricing for a converter that will keep the check engine line off.